In this video, I want to talk about entities. And in particular, I want to talk about detecting names. It's a fairly common task when you're designing your virtual assistant, but it's also very common in general applications. You might be interested in fetching names from a news article, for example. Now, this use case is so common that you can find pre-trained language models for this task. And these pre-trained models exist in lots of languages. However, the fact that these pre-trained models exist shouldn't give you the impression that it's an easy problem. Let's say that you've got a French language model and you would like to use it to detect names. Well, then you're gonna hit a big problem right away. You see, you might be thinking of France as the place where French is spoken, but there are plenty of other places around the world. Here's an interesting thought experiment. Suppose that I have a pre-trained language model. Can I really assume that I can just use it everywhere around the world? Or is that perhaps a bit of a stretch? Given that I have a French model, I still have to wonder where it got its data from. And this is especially true if you're trying to detect names. If I have a French language model that's overfitting on Wikipedia and news articles from France, then I can probably assume names like Véronique and François to be appropriately detected. But what about names like Fuad or Rahima? Now, I hope you recognize that if we are going to be using pre-trained models, we want to be able to detect all of these names, not just the ones that sound as if they are from France. I also hope that you recognize that this issue probably isn't limited to just French. This issue should be seen as a worldwide phenomenon, even if we are dealing with expats or with names that are not traditionally French, we should still be able to detect the name. So I hope that we recognize that this is indeed a theme that we should pay attention to. But what I would like to do in this video is just explore French pre-trained language models on their performance on detecting Arabic versus French sounding names. Now, in order to explore this potential performance difference between these two sets of names, I was thinking about a way to quantify the phenomenon. And here's what I came up with. What I can do is I can come up with a template. A template like Bonjour, je m'appelle, and then a name. And by the way, Bonjour, je m'appelle means hello, my name is. And what I've done is I've downloaded popular baby names. I have a set of names that are Arabic in origin, and I have a set of names that are very popular in France. Both sets contain an equal amount of male and female names, and I have about 700 Arabic names and about a thousand French names. So I should have decent quantities to start measuring this effect. And what I can do is I can take this template, fill in the appropriate name, and then pass that on to Spacey. Spacey has pre-trained French language models, and moreover, it has a very simple API that allows me to check whether or not it detected the person entity where the name was inserted. So just to give a quick example of what we might expect when using a Spacey API, I've got three pre-trained language models at the ready here. In particular, I've got the small, medium, and large Spacey model. And in general, it can be expected that the more lightweight model doesn't take as much time to compute, but that it's perhaps not as accurate, while the large model might take a while to download, but it should also be more capable. I can use the internal plotting tool to also show which entities were detected. And if I, for example, take the large language model, give it the template, bonjour, je m'appelle Vincent, you will see that it's able to detect that Vincent is indeed a person. What I could do now is I could replace this name by one that I found in this Arabic name list. And one thing that we should be mindful of is that Spacey doesn't just detect names of people, but a whole bunch of entities like organizations or indeed miscellaneous entities. 
So at times we will have these moments where an entity indeed was detected, but it wasn't able to detect the entity as a person. So what I'm going to do is I'll be keeping track of how often the inserted name here has been detected as a person, but I will also keep track of how often it was detected as any entity. So what I'll now do is I'll ignore most of the code in this notebook. The notebook will be publicly shared, so you're free to explore it yourself. But in this video, I would prefer to just look at the results and try to interpret those. So let's look at the results when we use this template on both of our sets of names across all of these different models. So here's the first set of results. We've got the name of the template that we are using, the name of the language model that we're using, the set of names that we are applying, and the numbers in this column represent how often we indeed detect the name, and the numbers in this column represent how often we detect any entity where the name is. There's a few things to observe here. We see that for the French models, we are able to detect something a lot of the time. But the entities that we detect aren't always detected as a person. We also see that for the French name set, it is indeed the large model that performs the best on this task. And I also think it's fair to mention that 77.9% isn't bad. However, if we look at the Arabic names here, the scores are downright terrible. Now, before we even suggest that Spacey is not doing a good job here, we should take a second look at the name set here and the name set here. Because after inspecting, I did recognize that all of the names here are lowercase, and that all of the names here are uppercased. It might very well be that whether or not a token is upper or lower cased is a feature that the Spacey model uses to detect whether or not there is indeed a name. So at the moment, I think the comparison that we're making here is unfair. The next thing that I should do is rerun this experiment, but now also keep capitalization in mind. And here are the results when I turn capitalization on for both languages. Now, if we run this, the results are completely different. It depends a little bit on the model that you're looking at, but for the Arabic name set, we actually see a performance that is slightly higher than for the French name set. This isn't the case for the large model, but it is interesting to see. Still, this capitalization is a proper cause of concern. If you consider how people talk on the internet or to a virtual assistant, then we cannot expect perfect spelling. So users may not be using capitalization when they are describing their name. Now, I want to explore this phenomenon further. And the way that I intend to do this is to add more templates. I'm still not going to be doing a full proper benchmark, but what I will be doing is just having more than the hello example. I've got one example where I'm only showing the name, one example where I'm saying that someone made the winning goal, another sentence that explains that a person likes cats, and the normal hello example. And what I'll be doing now is, besides checking for the different models, I'll also check if there's a performance difference across these templates. And here are the results. I have different templates, different models, capitalization turned on and off, and the scores for my two sets of names. Now, you get an impression as you glance over the results here. I've noticed at times that there's this big nasty difference between the two sets of names, but it's not always the case. In fact, from glancing at it, it seems like that mainly happens in the hello example, and it also only happens when I turn capitalization off. So to make some sense of this bigger data set, I figured I might aggregate the data a little bit to maybe get a better impression. So here's the aggregated results. In the first table over here, you'll notice that I split the data into the two different name groups. 
And you can see that Arabic names are not detected as frequently as French names if we aggregate over all the spacing models and capitalization. There's a similar thing happening for intents in general, too. However, if we remember that this includes the Bonjour Je m'appelle example, which performed terribly on lower case, then we might wonder, well, what if we remove all the examples that use lower case capitalization just to remove the awful performance on this example? Well, I also wrote that query and I found the result quite interesting. It seems that across the different templates that I have, as long as I keep capitalization forced, that the difference between the two name sets isn't as drastic. Now, there definitely still is a difference, so it's fair to say that we might need to be careful, but the difference isn't as drastic as we saw before. I think it's fair to be upfront to point out that what we're doing here is not a proper benchmark. After all, we're really only looking at four templates here. But I hope that you might agree that there seem to be two things happening here. Yes, there is a difference between the two name lists, and that's still a cause of concern, especially if our text has non-capitalized names. But there's also something about this particular template that seems to throw Spacey off. And when you go to the documentation page, you actually get a small warning that might explain what's happening. If you go to the Spacey documentation page, to the models section, you can inspect the different models that we've downloaded, and the documentation of Spacey does its best to explain how this model was trained. You can see how big the model is, but in particular, you can also inspect the sources that this model was trained on. And if you pay attention and scroll down, you'll even notice a warning at the bottom. In particular, it reads that the model was trained on Wikipedia and that it might perform inconsistently on many genres such as social media text. And if I consider the example Bonjour, je m'appelle, then it might be fair to say that although this is a very common conversational text, that it might not naturally appear on Wikipedia, and that therefore our concern isn't just limited to French and Arabic name sets, but also the fact that pre-trained language models might be trained on the data set that doesn't resemble what we are currently dealing with. These pre-trained language models certainly are useful, but they shouldn't be trusted blindly because of this phenomenon. So having said all that, I think it's fair to emphasize that name detection should be considered as a unsolved problem. Part of the reason might be cultural. A model trained on French names might be overfitting and might be less well equipped to find Arabic names. There's also collisions. It's very well possible that the name of a person is confused with the name of an organization or a company. So that's also something to be mindful of. But a large part of this can also be explained by the labels or the trained data set. So if you're in a situation like this, a very natural question might be, well, what can I do? Pre-trained spacey models on their own are very useful, but typically not enough. So you'll need to add some extra information yourself. One thing that you can do, though, is do what I did. Download these name lists up front. The thing with name lists is that they're reasonably well documented per region. So if you have a concern that certain names might be underrepresented, nothing is stopping you from downloading a name list like this one up front and just apply string matching. Now note that this technique will work for a lot of cases, but probably not all of them. Especially when names get abbreviated, this trick might not work. And this is in part because how names get abbreviated tends to depend on the language. My name is Vincent. In short, that could be Vinny, but in the Netherlands, that is spelled with an IE instead of a Y. If you're dealing with a conversational system, though, there is something that you can do that's probably going to be much more accurate. Because let's face it, if we're interested in knowing someone's name, 
then why even use machine learning? We can just ask the user what their name is, and while we are asking, we even have the opportunity to confirm that the name is indeed spelled correctly. And this will give us more control over data quality than anything that we might do with machine learning. Name detection is a hard problem. So maybe the best way of dealing with this problem is to ignore it and just go straight to designing a form in your virtual assistant instead.